On the subject of organs. Organs are a fascinating topic for both young and old alike. And even if you feel you fit into neither of these simple categories, do please like the best organs. Stay tuned. Organs. <coughs> well, where do you begin? I'm going to begin now, organs are a fascinating topic for both young and old alike. This is partly due to their size, and my God, they can be huge. Do they build small organs, you ask? Not on your nelly, I reply indignantly. Only big ones. This is what makes them so fascinating to both fat and thin alike. The most important part of any modern organ is the pipe. A pipes can come in many sizes, of course. Some are just bloody enormous. My God, are they big. Some pipes are so big, if you laid them on their side in Piccadilly Circus, they'd look like... they look... They'd look like I don't know what and other pipes are absolutely minute. Teeny, weeny, weeny, weeny little things. Some of them. Why, I've seen pipes so small, you can't see them. I haven't seen pipes so small, you can't see them. They're so small. And size is a very important facet of modern organ construction. This is because small pipes play high notes and big pipes play low notes. And in the 
in the construction of the organ, it is clearly crucial to place the pipes in the right order. Otherwise, anything could happen. <laughs> is but one example. Well, I think I've been talking too much. I hope I've been able to give you some sort of insight into modern organ construction and that we might meet again when we can feed and water another pet subject of mine. Bye. Take any page from a book, take a good look, what do you see? Not just the words, it's like a thousand little people. Somebody help me with this story, why does it always end the same? Everybody feeling sorry. Everybody's saying it's a shame And as for those who say why worry It's just a story anyway Well it's just another story Because it happened far away
As we enter Speedwell Cavern, then, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you a short murder story, so if you are of a nervous disposition, it's about time you got off. It concerns a young couple by the names of Alan and Claire, who were running away from their homes in Sheffield to get married at a small village called Peak Forest, which is just over the hill. Unfortunately, as they came to Castleton, bad weather set in, so they decided to spend the last night whining and dining at a local tavern. While they were there, five miners from this very mine saw them, and they couldn't help but notice the wealth and riches the couple were carrying, and decided to waylay and rob them the next morning. So very early the next misty March morning, the five miners got up, crept up the Winnet's Pass and hid behind a large limestone boulder. There they sat and waited for three hours until the couple were sighted on the way up. Alan leading Claire, who was riding side saddle on a pure white horse. And as they drew level with the boulder, those five burly Derbyshire miners suddenly leapt out and dragged the couple from the horses. Alan was flung to the ground one miner rose a dirty great pickaxe way above his head and brought it down through Alan's skull with a resounding. Now Claire, she suffered a fate worse than death. One miner approached her and broke from his trouser pockets a pen knife and then slit her throat from one ear to the other. And this sent pints of hot pulsating blood gushing out the freshly gashed cut, pouring over the bodies, trickling down the winnet's pass, leaving a hot, sticky mess. The miners, they ran off confident they'd never get caught. Indeed they didn't, but very soon the hands of fate took over. The three of those miners were blown to pieces in a mysterious blasting accident. The fourth, well he went totally insane, roamed the passageways for days on end and hung himself just under the white light here. As you see by the height of the light, he can't have been a very big fella. He was in fact a mini miner. The fifth one, well he left and went to work at Stone Middleton where, on his way to work one day, he slipped and fell. Ah! Now, he didn't die straight away. He managed to live on for four more days and nights. On the last night, he confessed the story to a village parson. This parson wrote the story down, and that's how we know it today.
They come three at a time Everyone knows About the highs and lows So look on the bright side As the saying goes It's not the end, my friend When all is said and done sunshine anywhere the wind blows it's not the end it's only just begun when all is said and done when all is said and done when all is said and done 